Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Friday, November 13th, 2020. I am so grateful that we have this time together to spend in God's word so that through his word, we might grow in our faith and also in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our savior. We begin today by reading the final portion of Psalm 116. This, by the way, is the psalm that is appointed for Holy Thursday, the events of which we'll hear about in our uh, New Testament reading today. How can I repay the Lord for all the good he has done for me? I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. The death of his faithful ones is valuable in the Lord's sight. Lord, I am indeed your servant. I am your servant, the son of your female servant. You have loosened my bonds. I will offer you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, within you, Jerusalem. Hallelujah. We have repeatedly seen how difficult the task that the Lord gave to Jeremiah was. It was so difficult that at times Jeremiah's life was even in danger. Today we're going to see one of those times when Jeremiah's preaching of the Lord's message put his life directly in danger. At the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, king of Judah, this word came from the Lord. This is what the Lord says. Stand in the courtyard of the Lord's temple and speak all the words I have commanded you to speak to all Judah's cities that are coming to worship there. Do not hold back a word. Perhaps they will listen and turn, each from his evil way of life, so that I might relent concerning the disaster that I plan to do to them because of the evil, de evil of their deeds. You are to say to them, this is what the Lord says. If you do not listen to me by living according to my instruction that I set before you, and by listening to the words of my servants, the prophets, whom I have been sending to you time and time again, though you did not listen, I will make this temple like Shiloh. I will make this city an example for cursing for all the nations of the earth. The priests, the prophets, and all the people heard Jeremiah speaking these words in the temple of the Lord. When he finished the address the Lord had commanded him to deliver to all the people, immediately the priests, the prophets, and all the people took hold of him yelling, you must surely die. How dare you prophesy in the name of the Lord? This temple will become like Shiloh, and this city will become an uninhabited ruin. Then all the people crowded around Jeremiah at the Lord's temple. When the officials of Judah heard about these things, they went from the king's palace to the Lord's temple and sat at the entrance of the new gate of the Lord's temple. Then the priests and prophets said to the officials and all the people, This man deserves the death sentence because he has prophesied against this city as you have heard with your own ears. Then Jeremiah said to all the officials and all the people, the Lord sent me to prophesy all the words that you have heard against the temple and city. So now correct your ways and deeds and obey the Lord your God so that he might relent concerning the disaster he had pronounced against you. As for me, here I am in your hands. Do to me what you think is good and right. But know for certain that if you put me to death, you will bring innocent blood on yourselves, on this city, and on its residents. For it is certain the Lord has sent me to speak all these things directly to you. Then the officials and all the people told the priests and prophets, This man doesn't deserve the death sentence, for he has spoken to us in the name of the Lord our God. Some of the elders of the land stood up and said to all the assembled people, Micah the Morishite prophesied in the days of King Hezekiah of Judah and said to all the people of Judah, this is what the Lord of armies says, Zion will be plowed like a field, Jerusalem will become ruins and the temple's mountain will be a high thicket. Did King Hezekiah of Judah and all the people of Judah put him to death? Did not the king fear the Lord and plead for the Lord's favor? And did not the Lord relent concerning the disaster he had pronounced against them? We are about to bring a terrible disaster on ourselves. 
In our New Testament reading, we continue to travel with Jesus through the events of that very first Holy Thursday, the night before he died. When evening came, he was reclining at the table with the twelve. While they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed, each one began to say to him, Surely not I, Lord. He replied, The one who dipped his hand with me in the bowl, he will betray me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for him if he had not been born. Judas, his betrayer, replied, Surely not I, Rabbi. You have said it, he told him. As they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat it. This is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. But I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. After singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, Tonight all of you will fall away because of me. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter told him, Even if everyone falls away because of you, I will never fall away. Truly I tell you, Jesus said to him, Tonight, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Even if I have to die with you, Peter told him, I will never deny you. And all the disciples said the same thing. Our writing for today is some commentary from St. John Chrysostom on the institution of the Lord's Supper. Our Lord gives thanks to teach us how we ought to celebrate this sacrament and to show that he does not unwillingly go to the Passion and to teach us that whatever we may suffer, we are to bear it thankfully, thence also suggesting good hopes. For if the type was a deliverance from such bondage, how much more will the truth set the world free, and he will be delivered up for the benefit of our race? Wherefore, I would add, neither did he appoint the sacrament before this, but only at the point at which the rites of the law were to cease. Thus, the very chief of the feasts, the Passover, he brings to an end. He removes the feasts to another most awful table, and he says, take eat. This is my body, which is broken for many. And how are they not confounded at hearing this? Because he had told them, told be, he had, had before told unto them many and great things regarding this, although they needed no more explanation because they had heard enough about it. But he does speak of the cause of his passion, namely the taking away of sins. And he calls it blood of a New Testament, that of the undertaking, the promise, the new law. For this he is also what he did in the old covenant. And what then this comprises the testament that is the new law. As the old testament had sheep and bulls, so this has the Lord's blood. Hence he also shows that he is soon to die, for which reason he also made a mention of a testament and reminds them in it of the former testament, which was also dedicated with blood. And again, he tells the cause of his death, that is, that his blood is shed for, the, for many for the remission of sins. And he says, do this in remembrance of me. Do you see how he removes and draws them off from Jewish customs? For as you did that, he says, in remembrance of the miracles in Egypt, so do this likewise in remembrance of me. The blood of lambs was shed for the preservation of the firstborn. This is shed for the remission of the sins of the whole world. Our hymn for today is a stanza from the hymn, Jesus Christ, our blessed Savior. Praise the Father who from heaven to his own this food has given, who to mend what we have done, gave into death his only son. And we pray. O Lord, in this wondrous sacrament, you have left us a remembrance of your passion, Grant that we may so receive the sacred mystery of your body and blood, 
that the fruits of your redemption may continually be manifest in us. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time in God's word with me today. God richly bless your day. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.